Extraction is a word that gets thrown around a lot in the world of coffee. You might hear it used to describe the way a coffee tastes, the way a shot of espresso pulled, or even to refer to a specific number. All of these uses are correct, and they're all important, but using the same word in so many ways can make this aspect of brewing seem kind of confusing. Today, let's untangle some of these different uses of the word extraction, and then finally, I'll explain the holy grail that is extraction percentage, and why it's so useful to professionals and to you at home, even if you can't necessarily measure it. The most common use of the word extraction in coffee is as a noun that describes the action of pulling soluble matter out of ground coffee using water. After all, the thing that transforms water into coffee is the fact that there's some small amount of dissolved coffee stuff in the water. For instance, you might see uneven flow on the underside of a portafilter basket and say, the extraction looks uneven. This use of the word enables us to describe the process of brewing in greater detail. The second and more exciting use of this word is to refer to what has been extracted, the actual solid coffee matter that we pulled out of the grounds and is now dissolved into the water. If you were to take a cup of coffee and boil it until all of the water had evaporated away, you'd find these solids left behind. You'd also find that you no longer had a cup of coffee. At home, and in most cases, the best way to measure extraction is something you're already doing, tasting your coffee. Your sense of taste is a wildly powerful tool that can tell you more about your extraction than most scientific equipment out there. The downside is that it doesn't produce any objective data. That's where this handy tool comes in, the refractometer. Instead of boiling our coffee to see what's left behind, the refractometer does something much more clever. By using an LED, a photo sensor, and a precisely calibrated algorithm, it can look at a drop of coffee and tell you what percent of it, by weight, is dissolved solids. Without going into too much detail, it does this by looking at the way light refracts through the coffee, comparing it against pure water to gauge the difference in refraction, then using that to calculate the total dissolved solids. This figure is referred to as percent TDS, or total dissolved solids, and it essentially tells us how strong our coffee is. For example, this pour over I made earlier has a TDS reading of about 1.25%, whereas this 40 gram shot of espresso had a TDS reading around 10%, which means that this shot of espresso is about eight times more concentrated than our pour over. By multiplying this number by the total weight of our coffee, we can determine the total weight of dissolved solids in the cup. If we take our 40 gram shot of espresso with a TDS reading of 10%, multiplying 40 by 0.1 shows us that we have four grams of coffee stuff in our cup with the remaining 90% or 36 grams being water. And people try to say coffee isn't hydrating. <sighs> that four grams is our extraction. That said, it doesn't tell us a whole lot about our cup of coffee. Here we got four grams from 40 grams of coffee, but if we got four grams from, say, a 20 gram dose of coffee, that would be an entirely different cup with entirely different characteristics, and probably not that pleasant either, but more on that later. A far more useful figure is extraction percentage, our total dissolved solids as a percentage of the total dose we started with. To do this, we simply divide the weight of our total dissolved solids by our dose. So in this case, we divide four by 20, which gives us 0.2 or 20%. This is our extraction percentage. When you hear coffee professionals talking about extraction as a value, this is the number they're referring to. And while it may seem simple, this one number can tell you a surprising amount about your coffee. The lovely thing about extraction percentage is the range of values that taste good is roughly the same across all coffees, roasts, and brewing methods. That golden range is 18 to 22%. And both the 1.25% TDS pour over and the 10% TDS espresso from earlier are smack in the middle of that range, which is why they're mostly gone. The reason these extraction values are so universal is because the various soluble compounds in coffee tend to dissolve in a certain order. The first compounds to dissolve are salty and sour, then you get sweet and savory compounds, and lastly you get bitterness. When all of these flavors are in balance, you get something delicious. But when one end of the spectrum dominates, you'll probably get something foul. Let's take a look at how this applies to something we've all had experience with. Dialing in is a core part of the espresso experience, whether we like it or not. And fundamentally, it's all about arriving at a pleasant extraction. Today, the grind setting on this grinder started a bit fine, so our first shot only gave us 25 grams in 28 seconds. Our next shot, after an adjustment, was right on the money at 40 grams in 28 seconds, which is my preferred recipe for this coffee. The dialed-in shot tasted great, balanced, sweet, and complex. That first shot tasted more like industrial runoff from the sour gummy worm factory. If we use our handy refractometer, we can see that the dialed-in shot is sitting at 20% extraction, right in the middle of our ideal 18-22% to range. The shot that was off recipe has an extraction percentage of 15%, way below the ideal range. This is what people mean when they say under-extracted, 
because we extracted so much less than the ideal range at just 15%, we got way more of those salty and sour compounds, resulting in a gross shot. Another aspect of brewing that affects extraction and results in weird tasting shots is channeling. When water flows through the grounds in our portafilter unevenly, some of our grounds remain under extracted. Here we've pulled one clean shot with no channeling, and another which we forced to channel by tamping unevenly. Let's give them a taste. Yeah, this shot with the channeling tastes way muddier and a little bit more acrid, much more sour than the shot that had no channeling. And when we look at the extraction percentage of both of them, it has significantly lower extraction, which totally reflects everything we've just talked about. Because we extracted less, we got way more of those salty and sour compounds, even though the shot pulled roughly to the same recipe. So we end up with a weird shot. Weird. Wrapping up this video, I want to be clear about one thing in particular. You almost certainly don't need a refractometer at home. They can be invaluable for professionals in a coffee shop, ensuring that their roasts and drip coffee come out to the same standard every day, or in a large-scale production facility to ensure that huge batches of coffee are brewed to the same standard. But, like I said earlier, your tongue can tell you almost everything you need to know about how your coffee is extracted. The goal of this video is to back up your keen senses with a deeper scientific understanding of what's going on while you're brewing. If you found these insights helpful, be sure to extract the like button. Tamp subscribe to keep up with our coffee experiments, and as always, thanks for watching.